Suppose d is a common divisor of the integers a1, a2 up to an. We would call the greatest common divisor of those integers g. We define g to be a positive integer. Then d divides g. So any common divisor of a set of integers will divide the greatest common divisor of those integers. Before proving this theorem, we look at, at an example. So we take the integers minus 24, 120 and 720. Those integers have common divisors 2, 3 and 4. So the theorem says that each of those common divisors will divide the greatest common divisor g of the integers. So 2 divides g, 3 must divide g and 4 must divide g. So that means that g must have factors 2, 3 and 4. We can write g as 2 times 3 times 4 times some unknown integer x. Now g divides the three integers of course so in particular it must divide minus 24 so 24x must divide minus 24 so that means that g must equal 24. g cannot be zero um, so and x is a in integer it's a positive integer so x can ha only have values 1 or 2 or 3 etc so x must equal 1 in this case if we want g to divide minus 24. The main step in proving this theorem is to prove this statement. The GCD of a set of numbers is their smallest positive linear combination. So that is if we take the GCD of the set of numbers a1 to an and call it g, then g must be the minimum positive linear combination of all the a's. And uh, the coefficients in that linear combination, the coefficients ki, must, must be integers. So let's look at, at an example. Let's look at the GCD of the integers minus 10, 20 and 25. Now that's equal to 5 and we can write 5 as a linear combination of minus 10, 20 and 25 and you can see the coefficients k1, k2 and k3 are integers. So the statement says that if we take the minimum, if, if we take all positive linear combinations of the integers minus 10, 20 and 25, in other words we run, we take a, b and c as integers but we make sure that this combination is positive. We look at all those positive linear combinations, we will find the minimum of them will be 5. Proof. Let L be the minimum positive linear combination of all the AIs with KI an element of Z. Now since the greatest common divisor of all the A's divides, obviously divides each of the AIs, that means that G will divide any linear combination of all those AIs. If G divides L, obviously G has to be less than or equal to L. Next we apply Euclid's division lemma to the integers a, i and l. So that tells us that there exists integers q, i and r, i such that we can write a, i as q, i times l plus r, i where r, i is non-negative and r, i is less than the magnitude of l. Well l is a positive integer by definition so we don't need to show the magnitude of l. If we make r, i the subject and substitute in for L, we see that Ri is actually a linear combination of all the A's. As we saw from the division lemma, we know that Ri is non-negative. It's greater than or equal to zero. Actually, we will show that Ri is equal to zero. To do that, we suppose that Ri is strictly greater than zero. Now we just saw that Ri is a linear combination of the A's, but if Ri is greater than zero it means it's a positive linear combination of the A's. From the division lemma we also saw that Ri is less than L, and L is supposed to be the least positive linear combination of the A's. So here's our contradiction. If L is the least positive linear combination of the A's, then Ri cannot be less than L. We conclude that Ri must equal zero. Um, so if we set Ri equal to zero 
we see that QI times L must equal AI, which means that L must divide AI. So if L is a common divisor of all the A's, it means L must be less than or equal to the greatest common divisor. We showed earlier that L is greater than or equal to G. Now we've shown that L is less than or equal to G. That means that L must equal G. Now we can get back to the theorem. So um, we want to show that any common divisor D of a set of integers will divide the greatest common divisor G. So we show that G is a linear combination of all the A's. If D is any common divisor of all the A's, clearly D will divide a linear combination of all the A's, so D will divide G.